How's it going? Good. I hope. At lunch. And there we go. Okay, so migrating an app after a component after a component. Um, what does it mean? It basically means that you don't always have the choice to rewrite a full application when you want to migrate to Ember. Let's consider that you have, I don't know, a five or seven years old application. Uh, this is what we had uh, at People, the company I work with. And um, we need to uh, integrate Ember to, take more, to have more control on our front-end application. And uh, we basically couldn't rewrite everything. So before I go deeper into that, um, hello, hello, me bit of a context of who am I and who I work with. So my name is Xavier Cambard. Um, French, as you can guess by the accent. Um, I work at PeopleDoc, which is uh, a French company also based in the US. Uh, we do HR software, so very, very big uh, processes, workflow. We are very heavy on models, and um, this is why we decided to Rewrite, rewrite our historic application um, with Amber. Um, because it's definitely ambitious. We had a big data model and uh, a ton of feature to, uh, to work with. So when I entered the company, um, I've basically been told, um, OK, can you, like, can you Amber all the things? It was my main thing to do. Uh, but I had a very, very quick discussion with the project team. And uh, it, there was no way we could like freeze the application, uh, stop working on new features. We already had a fast-paced development team. Um, the whole team was composed of Python developers, which own and hate front-end code. Uh, so I had to like liberate them from that and start building a number team. Uh, but as I said, unfortunately, you can't always start over. And if you are new to Ember, um, it, you will quickly realize by the documentation that um, by the book, you will have to start with a fresh app, with fresh API and a new project. And this is not always how it goes. Uh, the thing is, for us, the market is very demanding. Uh, we, con we were constantly shipping new features and we couldn't basically afford the six to 18 months of rewrites just for our own sake, our own sanity, and for our market as well. So we had to find another way um, to get Ember into our stack uh, for more control, for more security, for uh, an even faster development. And um, for like while doing that, we had a couple of epiphanies and uh, if you have something to like get out of this talk it's basically two things the first one is like the outside world is hostile um, when you're in uh, amber app you have like amazing tools uh, you have the run loop for instance which you don't have in the outside world like in your host app in your in your host app um, which makes it very uncivilized to a number of developer. Uh, the DOM can mutate uh, unknowingly without any kind of uh, for, like, forward or anything. The build process can be very hard to work with as well. So, you know, like very, very basically, um, you all know that like computing is all about consuming data and producing data. So we had to find a way and what I'm saying for um, embedding an Ember app into another stack is true as well for add-ons. It's just about finding the right way of opening your application and to the outside world and allowing it to communicate with it. So um, what we are going to do in this talk basically is how to open an API, how to build your app. And um, you also have to consider, this is the second epiphany that I'm going to talk about, is that your app is just a component. The component model is, in Ember is very, very powerful. It's very big. Um, it's a keystone uh, of the Ember 2.x series. And it comes with a lot of best practice. And they are very, very good, very amazing. Most notably, uh, data down action app. And the way we 
uh, integrated Ember into our um, existing app is by considering that we just removed a part of the application and replace it with a number app, which in the long run will only be a component in the bigger app. Uh, this is why I called my talk component after component. Um, there are some key topics that we'll have to face uh, when dealing with Ember and when dealing with integrating Ember into your, into your app. Um, some questions are pretty straightforward, some much less so. Um, those four questions, like very quickly, are for instance, uh, what part of the app will you migrate first? What will you start with? There are a couple of strategies that you can apply when embedding Ember, an Ember app into and migrating to Ember. Um, how will you bootstrap the app? Uh, because when you start an app, a classic uh, Ember CLI app, it just starts automatically, and this is not what you do in, like, in the general context you want to control when your app starts and where it starts and how it starts and in which context, um, which in which state, I mean. Then what's the communication workflow? Uh, how will your host app communicate with your Ember app? How, how will you pass data? How will you send orders? How will you um, make it a whole and not only um, an island of Ember into an old app? And last but not least, the build process. How will you integrate the build process into, uh, into your existing build pipeline? So first thing first, integration strategies. Uh, I said there are a couple of strategies you can work with. Very quickly, um, you can go with the most repeated components that the component will find the most in your application. Uh, it's a pretty good strategy because it allows you to dry up your code. Uh, it's good for um, interaction heavy application. Another strategy is to go with the most critical component, the one that brings the most value to your app. Um, it's very good safety net when you do like business software, uh, as I guess pretty, pretty, we, we all pretty much do. Um, you can also go with the most complex component because it's always like, for instance, if I'm taking the worst case scenario uh, of like a pure jQuery app with nothing, no framework, nothing at all, and you have a very heavy uh, component, it can really be a mess. It can really be very frustrating to work with. And then just getting rid of that to work with Ember, which you know and can control very precisely, it's also a big relief for the whole team. And adding features it makes it much easier. Um, we basically decided to go to, with another strategy, is to go with the component that uses you the most. And it brings a lot of value to them. We had a lot of features to add. And we show that uh, component right now, like an ID of what uh, our page was. We decided to go with the um, a faceted search. Um, so the part on the left, the facets were basically uh, traits, as we call them, as we could call them, uh, or facets. Um, so what is the price range? Uh, what is I don't know, like the age uh, for. A, I don't know, for a website like Amazon, it could be like the, the price, the rating, whatever. And what we had in this place was um, uh, we had counters, we had like uh, auto updating values based on previously selected facets. Uh, so it was like fairly heavy, not that difficult, but you know, with the old update, with the old data updating, requesting uh, new counters and everything. So it can really quickly be a mess. Uh, the search bar was obviously an autocomplete working based on the facets on the sidebar. And the data table was classically um, a data table with sorting, filtering, adding, removing columns, crazy rendering of some columns, etc., etc. So the way we did that um, is we decided to like first change the facets uh, and the very first iteration of our Ember app was only the facets, and it communicated with the rest of the app, just as it always did, and um, it allowed us to like bootstrap this whole integration integration thing.
once that was done, uh, we decided to uh, move the search component uh, into our Ember application. And once that was done, we moved to the data table, which was the, by far the hardest part. Um, goes like the data tables are always very, very hard. And once you've done that, you pretty much have the whole page set up. So once you have done that for one page, for two pages, for three pages, you can basically take over the whole page and the history, the router, and use the router as well. And then, boom, you have an Ember app. You have a full-blown Ember app and you have component by component, piece by piece, by piece replaced your former application like frameworkless or using whatever framework you want uh, with an Ember app. And this is when you're done. This is when you're done. But this is like basically the strategy that we went with. Uh, we are not there yet. We are currently working on the data table. Uh, so we are still one step away from that. Um, and we are adding features as well, so it's, you know, it's not always like a straight line. Um, so this is, you have to consider how you will migrate your app, because uh, it, it will have a huge impact on the roadmap, and uh, you, will, you may have some blocks uh, and some, bump, some bumps on the road. So yeah, please choose, like, pl plan ahead your, your strategy of how you will integrate your components. The second thing you will have to do once you have decided which component and once you have built in an isolated way your components is bootstrapping. Um, fortunately, now uh, with the Ember 2.x series, we have like a lot of very, very good uh, tools like the Visit API. Um, we, uh, services are amazing, of course, to handle data and to bootstrap the context and then the state of your application. So. Basically, what we did here is take the former app as it, as it existed before. Then we removed all the, all the HTML. It was a server-side rendered app, so the facets, the facets that you see on the left were uh, statically rendered. So we removed all the UL, LI, and everything, and we made it a data structure because the whole uh, options available uh, at Bootstrap, at least. And all options, the selected options, at the possible values and everything, and replaced that with a JSON structure. We uh, inserted a script tag, which Bootstrap the Ember app, and ta -da, we have an Ember app up and running in our application. Um, this is fairly easy to do, um, and let me show you like a bit more how it works. Um, the tools you have, for instance, are location. Um, you have to set location to none, otherwise uh, you will have your Ember app take over the, route, the router and in the history, and it can be a pretty big mess. Um, the root elements, select whatever you want, like at the very first step, we just selected the, the very root element of our former app of our former facets sidebar. Um, the app key uh, that you can see above uh, is a pretty nice way to pass options and to bootstrap the state of your application. So you already know that you have this and that and that option already selected because you mostly, like, if it's a server-side rendered app, you mostly don't, most likely don't have an API at hand or you don't have a way to handle the state. Uh, like a proper way to handle the state, so you just want to throw in data to your app and have it just work like that. Uh, and you will use, um, we used actually services uh, to receive and handle that um, facets, for instance, uh, objects. Uh, the visit API is absolutely great because you can work on multiple pages at the same time and bootstrap them uh, if at will. Uh, you pass a couple of options, and the good thing is the Visit API returns a promise, which means you also keep the control flow uh, sane, and your host app knows when your Ember app has started, and it allows to like chain dependencies uh, pretty neatly. It's very really good. Uh, I have a few words to say on Ember Island. Ember Island is a fantastic add-on uh, built by Mitch Lloyd. Uh, it allows you to basically simulate or do as if you had uh, multiple root elements. 
So it, for us, for instance, it allowed us to like integrate the search uh, functionality. Um, and how does it work? You just replace your application template with the Ember Island, and you add um, data attributes, data component attributes, to uh, indicate to your application, to your Ember app, uh, what components uh, you want to uh, bootstrap and where. Um, there is a way in Ember Island to uh, like pass configuration as a data attribute. Uh, didn't do that. I would not recommend doing that. I want to keep everything under control in the JavaScript part, uh, but that's really up to you. And there are certainly contexts in which it's a good thing to do. Uh, communication. This is a very big topic because you actually want your app to communicate, your Ember app and your host app to communicate together. Um, as I said, your app is basically just a component, and in Ember 2, uh, in the Ember 2 series, uh, we have the data down action up um, model, which uh, we tried and succeeded uh, to replicate uh, at the application level. So what does it look like? Uh, you, the whole cloud on the left is your host application. And uh, your Ember application obviously is embedded in it. And what your Ember application will do is just fire events to the outside world. Um, so it will fire and forget. So your host application knows when something happened, uh, but it doesn't, it, and so it can react to that. But what happens in your host app is not the responsibility of your Amber app. This is why an event is good, because you just want to lose control uh, on that. It's fire and forget, basically. Um, you also want to open like a, as small as possible API from your uh, Amber, from uh, in your Ember app, uh, so your host application can trigger methods and uh, have the state of your Ember application um, change accordingly. So with a bit of a code, what does it look like? Um, the slides will be published, so um, I'm not going very deep into that. Does it mean that your Ember application will extend the uh, evented uh, mix-in? So it can, send, uh, it can trigger events. Uh, you will use, uh, well, we used, actually, if you want to do another way, just tell me. It's very, it will be very informative. We used an instance initializer, so we could uh, like plug the application to uh, a couple of services and uh, trigger events um, accordingly. And what does it mean in the host app that you can just do my app dot on, for instance, update facets, and then have, have the application do something like reload data table or uh, add data or whatever, whatever is needed. Um, so this is basically how we trigger actions. Uh, and with the data down sort of thing, uh, we, well, very simply, we added, uh, we added methods to the Ember application, which was exposed, uh, just exposed globally uh, in the application as well. And uh, so we use the use the container to look up for the required facet and then trigger the action. The good thing is, one more, uh, is that if you return um, promises from your, uh, from your method, then you can keep the control flow go going and know when everything has happened uh, in your Ember app and then your host app can like, keep going. Um, which is like a very, very, very nice way to work with when if you have complex workflows. Uh, the last thing is the build process. Um, unfortunately for that, we don't have like a generic answer. Uh, we don't have a definitive answer to offer. It's very, very hard. It's very topic dependent. It's very context, context dependent, very depend, dependent on the host app on your former pipeline. Um, but fortunately, uh, we have Hember CLI, which is absolutely fantastic, I must say. Uh, we can use it from the uh, from the command line. There is, or you can use it programmatically with the API. So you are pretty much free. And the whole uh, broccoli um, uh, broccoli APIs are also available. So you can, if you are lucky enough, you have a broccoli uh, broccoli uh, built pipeline. You can plug the two together. Uh, maybe with um, a CLI deploy, something can be done. But we didn't try it. We'll see. Uh, but if you have something to get out of the build process, it, that it's very hard and you're on your own. Um, 
you, for instance, one thing that we found particularly uh, difficult is that the content hooks in the index.html that Amber um, CLI generates, uh, we didn't, we couldn't handle that because we had to inject our, uh, um, like, um, script tags and style tags by hand in our server-side rendered template because, as I said, it was a render side, uh, server-side rendered application. Uh, so that was uh, pretty hard, but the only thing that it means is that I should invest more time in, uh, in Ember CLI. So, hey, Steph, I heard you. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is by far uh, the hardest part uh, of, um, of the whole integration thing because it's really, really, really uh, dependent on how your existing build works. So, but once it's done, um, it makes the whole development and integration thing much easier, much easier. Uh, so basically we've seen that you can like bootstrap an app, a number app within an existing app, have it communicate, having, have it built. Uh, so yeah, good news. You can migrate all your existing apps to Ember. You have all the tools you need. Um, and I'm very, very glad that um, there was, there's going to be a learning core team because I have a lot of things to say to them. I would love to contribute more uh, to how to migrate the how to migrate an existing app to Ember because there are a lot of things uh, to be done. There are a lot of very, very ambitious applications which don't actually don't currently use Ember and which will benefit a lot from using it. So. That's pretty much it for the talk. Um, thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, you can ping me on Twitter, GitHub, wherever you want. If you want to talk or provide me with some feedback about uh, your current uh, situation. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, once you've gotten to that final step where you've migrated all of your individual components and you're ready to migrate the entire page to Ember. Do you find that there is a lot of cleanup to be done to kind of remove all of these hooks in this communication that you've built between the host and Ember? Or is it pretty quick and seamless to take that last step and say, this is now a full-on, uh, well-built Ember app? Um, yeah, the whole, um, the whole API thing, yes, we removed it, but that was just basically removing the method that we opened to the world. Uh, we use services uh, as, as a proxy between the Ember app, uh, well, no, not as a proxy, but uh, we use services a lot to handle the state and data and everything. And so once, in, for instance, uh, the bootstrap used a lot of um, JavaScript object, JSON uh, object. What we did, uh, that as soon as we had an API, we replaced the reading of the configuration by the API within the services, uh, in the service, and uh, we were basically done. So along the road, we shifted from a configuration-based state to an API-based, and then you know, it was a lot of juggling, uh, but it went pretty smooth, to be honest. Thank you very much.